Um, tonight's topic, tonight's topic is um, understanding baptism. We're going to be going over that, understanding baptism. Let's open up with the book of Jeremiah 2. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22. Let's open up with that one. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22. We're going to dig into it. All right. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22. Come on. For though thou wash thee with nitri and take thee much soap, yet mm -hmm. thine iniquity is marked before is marked before me, saith the Lord God. So the most High God was speaking through Jeremiah to teach us that although we wash ourselves with nitri, nitri is a soap. Okay, nitri is a cleansing solution. So we would do that. Okay, it says, and take much and take the much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, said the Lord. So although we would wash ourselves with nitri or soap, you understand, but the Lord was saying, listen, our minds were still filthy. Okay, our minds were still bugged out. So the nitri, the washing solution, didn't really take away our sins. That's what the Lord was saying here through Jeremiah. Watch this, because the custom of of, of washing with water and all of that, we've always done it. You understand? But the problem with us is that we tend to turn those things into doctrines, okay? Because what happened in the wilderness? The most High God commanded Moses to make a serpent of brass. What did Israel do? We ended up worshiping that thing and we giving it a name, Nehushna, Nehushta. We gave that thing a name that Moses made in the wilderness. You see, because Israel is backed out. Okay, watch this. Give me Exodus 19. Exodus 19 verse 9. Watch this. Okay. Exodus chapter 19, verse 9. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. The chariot. The, the chariot, that that's the, the thick cloud. Give me that in Psalms 104, verse 3, real quick. Psalms 104, verse 3. Read that thing. Psalms chapter 104, verse 3. Read. Who laid the beams of his chambers. In the waters, come on, make it the clouds his chariot. He does what? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? So the clouds is the chariots, is making reference to what they to, today the world calls UFOs. But the cloud is the chariot. Go ahead, the most high God transport transportation system. Okay, come on. Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Uh -huh. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Let's go back. Exodus 19, verse 9. One more again. Exodus chapter 19, verse 9. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, mm -hmm. that the people may hear when I speak with thee. So and now, the thee. Lord, hold on. The Lord is speaking to Moses, say, I'm going to come unto you in a thick cloud, the chariot. Okay? Because it was what? It was on smoke. You understand? Will Give me that in... Uh, Daniel 7 verse 9 real quick. Okay. Daniel 7 verse 9. He said that... Uh, uh, Daniel chapter 7 see. verse 9. Hold on. I, need to I beheld... To... Wait, wait, wait. It says, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. Okay. Which is the chariot. Watch this. Give me Daniel 7 verse 9. Watch this. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. Really? And the hair of his head was like the like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame. Was like the what? His throne was like the fiery flame. So he says the Moses throne was like a fiery flame. Go ahead. And his wheels as burning fire. His wheels is talking about his, the cloud, the chariot. His wheels, his transportation, his vehicle, which they, today the world calls UFOs. So it says, it was what? And his wheels as burning fire. That's why it says the thick cloud, because it was on fire. You understand? Go back to where he was at now. Exodus 19, verse 9 again. Exodus chapter 19, verse 9. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. That mm -hmm. the people may hear when I speak with thee. You see that thing? That the people may hear when I speak with thee. Watch this. Come on. And believe me. 
and believe thee forever. Come on. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and, and tomorrow. And do what? And sanctify them today and tomorrow. It says sanctify the people today and on the morrow. Okay, come on. And let them wash their clothes. Let them what? And let them wash their clothes. It says let the people wash their clothes. So with the sanctification was the washing. You understand? With water and wash their clothes. Go ahead. And be ready against the third day. Mm -hmm. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Upon what? Upon Mount Sinai. Upon Mount Sinai. Now watch this. So the, the using of water is always been in the Bible. We've done it many times. You understand? Watch this. Give me Numbers 19, verse 12. Numbers, chapter 19, verse 12. The book of Numbers, chapter 19, verse 12. Come on. He shall purify himself with it on the third day. You see that part right there? He shall purify himself with it on the third day. Read. And on the seventh day, he shall be clean. Come on. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day, he shall not be clean. You see that thing right there? So the purification is what we Israel used that. We use that. Because that was what? The Levitical priesthood order was the washing. You understand? So the, use, you, the using of water, we've always done in Israel. So it is not a new thing. So during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, during the time of um, John the Baptist and all of that, it wasn't a new thing. It was being done. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Okay, Luke 1 verse 6. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Come on. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. So now this is Zachariah and our foremother Elizabeth. Go ahead. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they were both now well stricken in, in years. So they, they, they were what? They had lived long. So they were, they were aged, they were in their old age, right? And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the what order. He did what? That while he executed the priest's office. You see that thing? While, while he executed the priest's office, because Zechariah was from the type of Levi, okay? So the, the order that we did in the wilderness during the time when we left Egypt, guess what? That thing continued even until the time of Christ, because we were still doing that, okay? Because the temple was standing that was built by King Solomon. Go ahead. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God, in the order of his course. In the what? In the order of his course. In the order of his course, because his course was to do what he dealt with incense. That was his course. That was his lot. Read. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Come on. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. You, they were praying without the camp, without the temple at the time of incense. The same way it was done when we had the mobile tabernacle, it was done when Solomon built the actual temple. So now what I wanna show you here is that the, the Levitical priesthood order was still in full effect, okay? It was still in place at this point. That's why Zacharias was doing it. Guess what? The washing of the, the washing and all of that, that's why John did it because guess what? That's what the, Le the Levites did. So when you read the book of Leviticus, you read through all of that. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book, give me the book of Acts chapter 19. We read this here last night. Okay, but I'm going to touch on it this day. Acts 19, let's start at verse 1. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, 
Mm-hmm. Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. So now the Apostle Paul, when he came to Ephesus, he found certain disciples. Where was Apollos? At Corinth. So the Apostle Paul was traveling to go and see how the brothers and sisters was doing in different congregations. Okay, come on. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? You see now, the Apostle Paul is asking the disciples he found at Ephesus. Have you what? Read that part again. And he, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He is asking them the question. Because obviously there was something going on at Ephesus that they were not aware of that the Apostle Paul was asking them about. Read. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So they have not heard of this before. We have not heard even as so much as they be any Holy Ghost. Read. Verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. So the question that the, the subject matter was about baptism. But the Apostle Paul's, the baptism that the Apostle Paul was talking about was not the one that they was aware of. They was only aware of John's baptism. Read that again, verse 3. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 3. Read. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. We were baptized unto John's baptism. So we want to deal with that thing. Okay, watch this. Um, you know what? Keep reading. Keep reading. Verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. So saying unto the people, hold on, wait. John, it says, John verily, meaning John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance. Because John's, the way to repentance, yes, John taught the laws, but the way he did it is the people was dipped in water. They washed with water. You understand? But they were cause, confessing their sins because John was teaching the what? The law. So meaning what? When the people was confessing, their, the, when the, John was dipping the people in water, what was the people doing? Confessing their sins. But today in the Christian church, the people don't confess their sins. They don't do that. Okay? But they are claiming to be doing water baptism. Read the part again, verse 4. Acts chapter 19, verse 4. Read. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, Mm -hmm. saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Because guess what? The people didn't believe that thing. You understand? Watch this. Not all of them, but the majority of the people didn't believe it. Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Matthew now, chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 1. So we're going to dig deep into John's baptism, okay? Because the use of water, we've used it throughout. From the time when we left Egypt, we've been using that, okay? Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. So John the Baptist was teaching, okay? Come on, like we are doing this day, right? And say, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see what he was teaching? He says, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jump down to verse 6. Matthew chapter 3, verse 6. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So the people that he was teaching repentance to, what was he doing to them? He says, well, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So when he was dipping them in the Jordan River, the people confessed their sins. Because what did John teach? The law. You understand? Watch this. Read on. Verse 7. Verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, mm-hmm. how, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? So now, this, remember, the scribes and Pharisees, uh, not only did they follow Christ, they followed John also. You understand? Talking smack. Read that again. Verse 7. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. Mm-hmm. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, 
who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Come on. Bring forth, therefore, fruit meat for repentance. You see what he's saying? He's telling the scribes and Pharisees, listen, bring forth, therefore, fruit meat for repentance. Meaning what? Fruit good for repentance. Meaning what? It's not just about the water. Mm -mm. You must bring forth works. The fruits. You understand? The, the fruits meet for repentance. Meaning what? You must, your works. It's not just about, okay, yes, the people confess their sins. But the people didn't go back to their sins. That's why they were bringing forth fruits meet for repentance. Yes, he was dipping them in water. But the people confessed their sins and they repented. Okay, come on. Verse 9. And think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. Read. So I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So because the reason why the, the reason why he's saying what he's saying is because the scribes and Pharisees believed that the only thing we need to do is just we just know that we are Abraham's seed. That's that is good enough. We are Abraham's seed, and that's it. Today, you know what that's called? No, we are Israelites. I know I'm an Israelite. Okay, that's it. I can be a nigger now. I can continue to be the nigger I was in the world. Okay? So that's the, the mindset of the scribes and Pharisees. It was not about the work. It was about, yes, I'm an Israelite, and that was it. Part-time Israelites. Okay? It was not about the, the scriptures. It's about, it, it was about for sure. Look at what the, the Christian pastors are doing today. They are doing the same thing. You, you think they don't know that they are Israel? Of course they do. But because they are too deep, you understand? They are too covetous. They hate their people. They worship money. They are not going to let go all of, of all of that and come and serve the one true God. They won't do it. Okay, read that again, verse 9. Matthew chapter 3, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. That's what the Lord is doing this day. Because of what? The works. We believe, we keep the commandments. The Lord is working with us. Read. And now also, the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So now, this, this tree right here, that is going to be what? That is going to be hewn down and cast into the fire. Is, is making reference to the scribes and Pharisees. That's the tree. If you read Psalms 1 and 1 down, it says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So yes, he's going into the metaphor regarding men. So what he's going, what, what he's going into here is saying, if you don't bring forth fruits, meet for repentance, then when the Lord returns, you will not make it. That's what he's saying right there. Hold this. Give me the book of John chapter 5. Okay. Give me John real quick. Give me John chapter 5 and verse 29. Watch this. The book of John chapter 5, verse 29. Read. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. So they that have kept the command, hold on, those that have kept the commandments unto the end, they've endured unto the end. It says what? It says unto the resurrection of life. They are going to be resurrected to life. To what? To be in the kingdom. Go ahead. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. You see that thing? They that have not kept the laws. Those that only said, we, all, we have Abraham to our father, and that's all we need to do. We, are, we, are, we know that we're Israel. That's it. We don't got to do nothing. So it says what? Read that part again. They that have done evil. And they that have done evil unto mm -hmm. the resurrection of damnation. And to the resurrection of damnation, meaning what? They are going to resurrect, they are going to be resurrected and be judged. And then after they are judged, they are going to be put to death and cast into the lake of fire that burneth with brimstone. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Daniel 12, verse 2. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Because the things that Christ was speaking about is the same things that the prophets have spoken about. All right, Daniel 12, read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 2. Read. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake. Shall what? Shall awake. Shall awake. Uh, they are going to be resurrected to life, like we read in John 5, verse 29. Come on. Shall awake. Some to everlasting life, 
-hmm. and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Read that part again, verse 2. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. You see that thing? And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Guess what? Because we all must sit, we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, give me that in uh, 1 Corinthians 5. And I believe it's 2 Corinthians what I want. 2 Corinthians 5 is 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is 10. Mm -hmm. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Come on. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done. Read. Whether it be good or bad. You see that thing? Yeah, so we all must what? We must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ for the things that we've done, whether it be good or whether it be evil, but it must go down. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay, let's go back. Matthew chapter 3, verse 10, again. Matthew chapter 3, verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. You see that thing? It's hewn down and cast into the fire. Because guess what? They, are, they don't want to do the works. They, don't want to, they, didn't, they didn't care about getting themselves right. Okay, come on. Read on verse 11 now. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. What did John say? I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance you see what john is saying he says he baptized you with water unto repentance go ahead but he that cometh after me is mightier than i mm -hmm. whose shoes i am not worthy to be come on he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire so john is telling the scribes he said listen i'm baptizing you with water unto repentance you understand but then he's talking about somebody that will come after him. We're going to deal with that later. Give me Acts chapter 1 verse 5. Acts chapter 1 verse 5. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 5. Read. Really? For John truly baptized with water, mm -hmm. but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Read that again, verse 5. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, mm -hmm. but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So now, he, this is now Luke now. Okay, it says, for John truly baptized with water, which is what we read in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, out of John's mouth. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many, day, not many days hence. Meaning what? It's coming shortly where this water baptism stuff is going to be done away because the people were still baptizing with water because why? They were not, their minds, they were still what? They were, they, they were still used to John's baptism, although Christ was being taught because during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, Christ is gone already, okay? But the people were still stuck there. So they needed to transition from the water baptism to the Holy Ghost baptism, which is the baptism of Christ, okay? Watch this. Give me... Go back to go back to Matthew. Go back to Matthew three verse eleven. Matthew chapter three verse eleven. Come on. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, mm -hmm. but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Really? Whose shoes I am not worthy to be. Come on. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now watch this. Jump down to verse thirteen. Verse thirteen. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Because Christ, John, John baptized Christ in water. Okay? John baptized Christ in water. Read on. Verse 14. Come on. But John forbade him saying. But verse 14. But John forbade him saying, I have need 
to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? You see what John is saying? John was saying, no, 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 I, do, I can't baptize you. You understand? I says, I have need to be baptized of thee, meaning you must baptize me, okay? That's what John is saying. And comest thou to me? Read on. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. You see what thus Christ is it saying? Cometh us so it's to hold fulfill on. all. Wait, wait, wait. There's a bit of a delay. Okay. Uh, read verse 15 again. One more again. Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. Read. Right? For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. So then he allowed him. So meaning what? So Christ was telling John, listen, no, this, must, this thing must go down. Okay, it must happen. So that the scriptures may be fulfilled. You see that thing? So that's why that needed to happen. Because there was a transition going on. Transitioning from John's baptism to Christ's baptism. That's why Christ had to be baptized by John. You see that thing? That's why that thing had to happen. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of John, chapter 3. Okay, John chapter 3, verse 30. You know what? No, Luke 176. Because John's baptism, when John was baptizing, what was he doing? It was a symbolic thing going on when what John was doing. He was paving the way for Christ. That's why Christ allowed John to baptize him in water. You understand? Watch this. There's another scripture. Hmm. Wait, wait. Give me the book of Ephesians. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4, I believe, just popped into my head. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4. No, 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 no. I think it's 1 Corinthians. Let me look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse. Yes, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 32. Watch this. Okay, start at verse 31. Start at verse 31. First Corinthians 14, verse 31. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one. You may what? All may learn and all. For ye may all prophesy one by one. Okay, wait. There's a bit of a delay with that. First book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one. Come on. All may learn and all may be conf comforted. No, comforted. Read that right. Come on. The first book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 31. Really? For ye may all prophesy one by one. And mm -hmm. all may learn and all may be comforted. So now what the apostle Paul is saying here says, it says, um, for you may all prophesy one by one, meaning one at a time. You can't be doing it at the same time. There'll be confusion. There'll be out of order. Will not be done in the spirit of Christ. So it says, for you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Read that again. First book Corinthians chapter 14, verse 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Meaning what? The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Meaning what? So Christ, Christ could not be teaching, Christ couldn't be teaching the, 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 the true baptism, which was well, after John, while John was doing his. Although the disciples, they did it because guess what? They were still used to John's baptism, but John himself, when Christ showed up on the scene after he baptized Christ, he didn't do the water baptism no more. You understand? That's why I said the spirit is subject to the prophets. They may prophesy one by one. You understand? So John did it. And after when John was done, Christ's baptism, true baptism, had to what? Had to be the one that was in what, what we needed to be the one that needed to what? To be in full effect. But they had to transition. That's why they may prophesy one by one, one at a time. John comes first, Christ comes after him. That's why John was explaining to the people, the followers, the disciples that, listen, yes, I'm baptizing with water, but there's one that's come after me. He's going to be the one that you should follow. You see that thing? 
Read that part again, verse 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 76. This is what John was doing. Okay. Luke 1, verse 76. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 76. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, mm -hmm. for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To do what? Prepare his ways. To prepare his ways. This is talk about John, to prepare his ways. Because John's, the, John's job was to pave the way for Christ. Okay, watch this. John chapter 1 verse 30. John the 1 verse 30. John verse 30. Come on. This is he of whom I say, after mm -hmm. me cometh the man which is preferred before me. Come on. For he was before me. That's some heavy stuff right there. It says, um, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me. Preferred before me. Meaning what? Christ. He was making reference to Christ. But what John was doing was he was paving the way for Christ. Just like we are doing right now. We are paving the way for the second coming of the Lord. Just like Elijah did. You understand? Which is John the Baptist. Okay. Elijah returned in these last days to what? To, to turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the fathers to their children. You see that thing? Read that again, verse 30. Because why? The spirits are subject to the prophets. Okay, read that again, verse 30. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 30. Mm -hmm. This is he of whom I say, After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for Wait. he was before me. Now give me John chapter 3, verse 30 now. John 3, verse 30. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 30. Mm -hmm. He must increase, but I must decrease. You see what John is saying? He says, Christ must increase, he must decrease. Meaning what? The water baptism was coming to an end when Christ showed, on this, showed up on the scene. Water baptism was coming to an end, and the true baptism, you understand, the more perfect way was what? Christ's baptism, which was with the Holy Ghost. You see that thing? And to believing on him rather than what? The blood of bulls and goats. Okay, read that again. The first, the book of John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. Jump up to verse 28. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I say, I am not Christ, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. You see that thing? But I am sent before him. Because John the Baptist was paving the way for Christ. That's why John, and John kept reminding them over and over. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm not the Christ, okay? But the one that is coming, he is the Christ. You should believe on him. I'm just paving the way for him. That's what John kept telling the people, the disciples, and the multitude that followed him. Okay, jump back down to verse 30 again. Book of John, chapter 3, chapter 3 verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me... Go back to Matthew now, chapter 3. Matthew 3, verse 15 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 15. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it not to be so now. But thus, no, no, become... not, not suffer it not. Read that again, verse 15. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 15. Go ahead. And Jesus answering said unto him suffer it to be so now mm -hmm. for that it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness come on then he suffered him so he allowed him to do that thing right there watch this verse 16 now and jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. You see that thing? And lighting upon him. So that's when Christ was activated at that point. You understand? Because now uh, John needed to decrease.
Christ needs to increase now. The more perfect way, which is what? The way of Christ. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me... No, that's it. That's it on that. Watch this. Give me the book of... Um, before I go there, give me the book of John now. Okay? Give me John. You know what? Go back to Matthew. Jump back up to verse 11. I want to touch on that thing. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 again now. The book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Mm -hmm. He that cometh after me is mightier than I. Come on. Whose I am not worthy to pay. Come on. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So now he says, the one that comes up to me, he is the one that he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Give me the book of Acts, okay? Acts chapter 7, verse 51. So Christ will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Let's get the Holy Ghost. The book of Acts chapter 7, verse 51. You Come stiff neck, circumcised in heart and ears. Mm -hmm. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. So he says, we do always resist the Holy Ghost as our fathers did. So do we, the children this day. Jump down to verse 53. Who have received the law by uh -huh. the disposition of angels and have not kept it. You see that thing? The Holy Ghost is the law that we received by the disposition of the messengers, that's the angels, and have not kept it. So go back to Matthew 3, verse 11 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Come on. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose mm -hmm. shoe I am not worthy to pay. He Come on. baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now watch this. He says, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, with the law. Meaning no water involved. Just the law. He's going to teach the law. That's it. Okay. There's not going to be any water, any, mm -mm, the law. You believe on him according to what is written. The law, keep the commandments. You see that thing? This one that's coming, he's going to baptize you with the law. You understand? So the water baptism was, was symbolic of Christ. But the way Christ would do it, the water wouldn't be there, but he would deal with the law directly. You understand? Read that part again, verse 11. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with the water, with water unto repentance. Come on. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not ready to pay. Mm -hmm. He baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now watch this. Read John chapter 1 now. Give me John chapter 1, verse 33. Okay, John 1, verse 33. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 33. And I knew him not, but he that came to me to baptize with water. Stop right there. He says, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. So who sent John to baptize with water? Christ did that thing. Okay. Christ is the one that sent John to baptize with water. Read. I lost my parents, sir. Okay, read the verse again, verse 33. The book of, the book of John, chapter 1, verse 33. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. Come the on. Same to me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending. And remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. You see that thing? He says, the one that you see the Spirit descending on him. That's what we read in Matthew chapter 3. Go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16. The book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. And Come Jesus, on. when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. and lo. The heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Go back to where he was at, John 133. 
the Pukatron, chapter one, verses 33. Come on. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining him, remaining on him. The same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. He says, so Christ will baptize you with the law. The one we read in Acts 7, 51 and 53. Christ will baptize with the law. Watch this. Give me John 4, verse 1 now. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. So Christ baptized more disciples than John, but Christ's baptism was with the Holy Ghost. Like we read in John 1, okay? Matthew 3, verse 11. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Read that again, verse, four, verse 1. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. When therefore they knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Come on. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. So Christ baptized not with what? With water. Christ didn't baptize with water because it's not written. John was the one that was doing that and his disciples. But when Christ showed up on the scene, you what? John had to decrease because Christ needed to increase. You see that thing? Because the spirit is subject to the prophets. Read verse 2 again. The book of John chapter 4 verse 2. Which Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. Uh -huh. So now watch this. Christ baptized not with, with, uh, with water, but his disciples, because the disciples that now followed Christ were the disciples that followed John. Watch this. Give me John 132 now. Okay, John 132. The book of John, chapter 1, verses 32. Come on. And John directed, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And in the boat upon him. Read. Meaning what? The spirit jumped on Christ. Read. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me. Upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending. And remaining on him. The same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Read on. And I saw. And I bear record. That this no, no, is. No. He says, and I saw and bear record. Come on, read that again. The book of John chapter 1 verse 34. And I mm -hmm. saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. You see that thing? He says, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Because John witnessed this thing. Go ahead. Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples. And what? Two of his disciples and two of his disciples because john had disciples that's why it says uh, though jesus himself baptized not but his disciples this is talk about john's disciples okay read that part again verse 35 and two of his disciples no no verse 35 verse 35 again come on the book of john chapter 1 verse 35 again the next day after john stood and two of his disciples. And two of his disciples, read on. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. You see that part right there? And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. So he's telling his disciples, Behold, the Lamb of God right there. He's the one that is going to increase. I have to decrease. Go ahead. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. You see that part right there? And the two disciples heard John speak, and they followed Christ, because they believed. They believed, that's why they followed Christ. But there were those disciples that were still doing what? That were still doing water baptism, because that is what they was used to doing. You understand? The majority of the disciples that followed John, they were still doing water baptism. All right? But because, but it was what? They were, it was phasing out because now they needed to teach them what? Christ, the true baptism, which is what? Being baptized with the Holy Ghost. 
Watch this. Give me, um, give me the book of Acts chapter 18, verse 24. No, no. You know what? Give me Acts 19, verse 1 now, again. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 1. Read. It came to pass that while Apollos was set at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. So these disciples were John's disciples because they didn't know anything about being baptized with the Holy Ghost. All they knew was John's baptism. So these were John's disciples that the apostle Paul found at Ephesus. Okay, read that again. The book of Acts chapter 19 verse 1, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He found certain disciples. Watch this. Give me Acts now, chapter 18 verse 24, because Apollos was one of the, the disciples of John. Okay. Acts 18, verse 24. Read that. The book you know, Acts started, 18. Start at, verse, start at verse 23. Start at verse 23. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 23. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went all over the country no. of Galatia. And went, when, when went all, he says, went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia. Okay, read verse 23 again. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 23. Uh -huh. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. You see that thing? So this is the apostle Paul and his travels. So the country of Galatia, he was what? That's why the book of Galatians is written. Because Paul was where? He, he visited these places, okay? So Galatia and Phrygia. These are all the cities of what? Galatia. Okay, read on. Verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexander, an eloquent man and mighty born in the scripture. Okay, wait. Read verse 24 again. Read that part again. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria. Okay, stop right there. Born at Alexandria. Because guess what? Alexandria is where? Because remember, um, hmm. now this is Greek history, okay? What happened was that um, Alexander, because remember Alexander con he was conquering all over. You understand? Ptolemy was given Egypt. And when Antiochus came, he, 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 he killed um, um Ptolemy and he took over Egypt. But Egypt was first was conquered by who? Alexander, the so-called great. So he named it after himself, Alexandria. So when you say Alexandria, it's talking about what? There's the, the Egypt. He's basically talking about Egypt, the Middle East, and all that, so-called Middle East. He's talking about those areas. Okay, read that again. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man go ahead and mighty in the scriptures came to ephesus he came to ephesus remember who was at ephesus he came to ephesus the apostle paul was at ephesus you see that thing when the apostle paul was at ephesus where was where was apollos at corinth so when he got to ephesus guess what they knew guess what they was taught at ephesus the true baptism of christ which is what being baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's why when, go back to Acts 19, so you don't lose the thought. Okay, the Acts point. chapter 19. Hold on, Acts 19 verse 2. The book of Acts chapter 19 verse 2. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since he believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether they be in the Holy Ghost. Okay, so he's saying, um, read verse 2 again. You are messing me up. So when I call a scripture, before I even say anything, don't just jump and read. Okay? I need you to follow me. Uh, Acts 19 verse 2 again. The book of Acts 19 verse 2. He said unto them, 
Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether they be in the Holy Ghost. So the, 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 the disciples at Ephesus, they were not aware of in they be any Holy Ghost because they knew John's baptism. So now when the Apollo, when Apollos got to Ephesus, the apostle Paul was there already. Meaning what? He passed there already. So now they were fully aware of the true baptism of Christ. Watch this. Go back to Acts chapter 18, verse 24 now. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. He came to Ephesus, come on. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So now the Ap Apollos only knew the baptism of John. So Apollos was John's disciple. Okay, Apollos was John's disciple. Watch this, go ahead, verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Uh -huh. he was and when he was speaking boldly in the synagogue, he was teaching only that which he knew, which was what? John's baptism. Come on. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him, they took him unto them uh -huh. and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. You see that thing? They they, it says they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Because what is that going into? Is going into the bapt the true baptism of the true baptism, which is the baptism of Christ. That's why, because they were aware now of the baptism via the Holy of the Holy Ghost, the true baptism of Christ. That's why he is saying they expanded unto him the way of God more perfectly, so that he also can understand that that John's baptism was only for that time, but what it needed to decrease so that Christ's baptism can increase which is baptism via the Holy Ghost. Okay, watch this. Um, keep reading. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, Achaia, the, Bible, the book of Acts chapter 18, verses 27. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. You see that thing? So they exhorted the disciples to receive Apollos. Go ahead. Who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. You see that thing? He, so he now, he was helping now those that went, that believed through grace. Who bring, give me John 1 17 now. Watch this. John chapter 1 verse 17. The book of John chapter 1 verse 17. Uh -huh. For the Lord was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses. Go ahead. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You see that thing? Go back to where he was at. Acts chapter 18, verse 27. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 27. Really? And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was, when he was come, Help them much which had believed through grace. Meaning what? He took it to, he took the understanding to the next level because yes, they believed on Christ. You understand? But now Priscilla and Aquila, they've given him what? The more the understanding now. Now he's taking that understanding, he's going where? He's going to the brethren to what? To what? To give them more understanding that he now has received. Go ahead. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Come on. And that publicly showing Wait. the scriptures. Hold on. No, he did it privately. Publicly. He did it publicly. He says, for he mightily convinced the Jews. And that publicly. That's why they are the Christian pastors. They don't want to come to the streets. So what I want you to see, you brothers, right? What you know. A Christian pastor, you can run circles around a pastor. With all that you know, just knowing Deuteronomy 20, you can run circles, you can run circles around him. They don't understand this Bible. You understand? 
what you know a Christian pastor will not be able to stand. You understand? That's why we can do it publicly. Because guess what? We are moving in the spirit of Christ. All praise to the Most High God for that thing. Read that again, verse 28. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 28. Read. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that uh -huh. Jesus was Christ. You see that thing? He showed by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. That's some heavy stuff right there. So when he got the understanding, guess what he did? He went, because guess what? Give me Sirach 3317. Okay, Sirach 3317. Because there's one thing he understood, which I always tell you, brothers. Okay. Sirach 33, verse 17. Read what you got. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verses 17. Read. Consider that I labored not for myself only, but for all of them that seek learning. No, but for all them, you are rushing. Come on. Verse 17 again. I need you to stay focused, okay? Verse 17, one more again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 17. Consider that I labored not for myself only, uh -huh. but for all them that seek learning. But for all them that seek learning. That's what, they are, that's what Apollos was doing. Once he understood, guess what he did? He went out to teach the people. That is what we are doing this day. That's what you brothers job right now. You are being groomed. You understand? So that you can understand the way of God more perfectly. All right? Watch this. Give me the book of First Corinthians. Okay? Because what, what Christ taught the people, what, what Christ was teaching, he was not baptizing nobody in water. He baptized with the Holy Ghost because what? John's baptism was temporary. Okay, it was not going to be forever. All right, give me First Corinthians chapter one, verse fourteen. First book of Corinthians chapter one, verses fourteen. Read. I thank God that I thank God that I baptized none of you, uh -huh. but Crispus and, and Gaius. 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 Uh -huh. Read that again, verse 14. The first book of Corinthians chapter 1, verse 14. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Christmas and Caius. Read. Lest any should say that I baptized in my own name. You see that thing? He says, I thank God that he says, I, I thank God that I baptized none of you. He's talking about the church in Corinth because the church in Corinth was a headache to the apostle Paul. So he's saying, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. Read on. Verse 15. Lest any should say that I baptized in my own name. He says, lest any should say I had baptized in my own name. Go ahead. Lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. Come on. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas. Read. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. So now he's listing the people that he baptized. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. For Christ sent me not to baptize. Hold on. Read that part again. The first book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize. He says, Christ sent me not to baptize. Christ didn't send me to come and baptize you. He's going to tell you what he means by that. Go ahead. But to preach the gospel. To do what? Preach the gospel. Hold this. Give me Ephesians 1 verse 13. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. He says, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Read what you got. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. In whom he also trusted after that, he heard the. After that, he heard the word of truth, uh -huh. the gospel of your salvation. So now the gospel is the word of truth, which is what's going to allow us to be delivered from the hands of our enemies that de de despise us. So the gospel is the word of truth, which is what the law. So go back to where he was at First Corinthians chapter one verse seventeen. First book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17. For mm -hmm. Christ sent me not to baptize, 
but to preach the gospel. But to do what? Preach the gospel. But to teach the law. But to teach the law. To baptize you with the what? The Holy Ghost. That's why he's saying, Christ sent me not to baptize. What is he talking about? Not to baptize you with water. But to teach or preach the gospel, which is what? The law to baptize you with the laws of God. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying right here. Go ahead. Not with wisdom of words. Uh -huh. Lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You see that thing? It says not, not with wisdom of words. Meaning what? Not with my own words. Worldly wisdom. Mm -mm. You see, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Meaning what? I must teach as it is written. As it is written, give me Acts chapter 17. Okay, Acts 17, start at verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 17, verses 1. Now, when they had, pa now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollo Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica. Where they where was a synagogue of the Jews. So now in Thessalonica, that's why we have the book called the Book of Thessalonians. Okay. So uh, Thessalonica, it says, where was a synagogue of the Jews? So there was Jews in Thessalonica. Okay, go ahead. And Paul, as his manner was, mm -hmm. went in unto them Come and on. three Sabbath days. Mm -hmm. Reason with them out of the scriptures. Out of the what? Scriptures. Not the wisdom of his own mind. No, out of the scriptures. He reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Read that part again. He did what? And reasoned with them out of the scriptures. He reasoned with them out of the scriptures. I want to show you something heavy here. Next verse. Watch this. Opening. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that he's Jesus and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. You see that thing? So the same thing that, the, uh, that Apollos was teaching is the same thing that uh, the Apostle Paul is teaching right here. So Apollos was following the footsteps of the Apostle Paul. That's what Apollos was doing. He was following after the footsteps of the Apostle Paul. Because when you go back to the book of Acts, chapter 18, read Acts 18, 28. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verses 28. Read. For he, might, for he mightily convinced the Jews. Read. And that publicly... Showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. You see that thing? He was showing no, by his own mind. What did he do? Showing by the scriptures uh -huh. Jesus Come was on. Christ. You see that? He was showing by the scriptures, not by the wisdom of his own mind. Mm -mm. By the scriptures as it is written, that Jesus was Christ. The apostle Paul was doing the same thing. So Apollos was following after the footsteps of the apostle Paul. Go back to where was that? Acts 17, verse 3. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 3. Read. Opening and alleging Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. The same thing. So the same thing that Apollos was doing, Paul was doing the same thing. Or let me put it like this. What the, same, what the apostle Paul was doing, Apollos was coming behind him doing the same thing. That is what we're reading here. So he wasn't using the wisdom of his own mind. Go back to 1 Corinthians now. Chapter 1, verse 17 again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 17. The first book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 17. Come on. For Christ 
sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Now watch this. Do you see what the Apostle Paul is saying? He says, not with wisdom of words. We gave an example of what, what Apollo was doing. Apollos was doing coming behind Paul. Watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 2 now, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. First book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Come now, on. we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. The Holy that Ghost, we, come on. So the spirit which is of God is the Holy Ghost. That's the spirit of Christ. Okay, read it again, verse 12. First book of Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Uh -huh. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So now the spirit of God that is the, the, the spirit which is of God is talking about what? The laws of God, the spirit of Christ, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. Next verse, watch this. Which things also we speak. We what? Which things also we speak. So the things of the spirit of God is the things that we also speak, which is what we are doing this day in these last days. Come on. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. You see that thing? So when it says, go back to 1 Corinthians 1 verse 17. First book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17. Mm -hmm. Christ sends me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Come on. Not with wisdom of words. You see that thing? Not with wisdom of words. Go back to 1 Corinthians 2 verse 13 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13. So what you want to see, what you what you want to see out of this, it says it says not with wisdom of it says not with wisdom of words. When he says not with wisdom of words, he's talking about what? Man's wisdom. Man's wisdom. That is not the wisdom that we're supposed to use to teach our people the good news. We must use God's wisdom to teach our people the good news. That's why the Apostle Paul is mentioning it twice. Okay, verse 13 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13. Come on. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Come on. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. That's the gospel that the Apostle Paul, hold on. That's the gospel that the Apostle Paul was teaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. When it says, Christ did not send me to baptize, meaning what? With water. But to what? To preach the gospel, the law. So now when it says, not with wisdom of words, not with wisdom that man's, not with man's wisdom. Not the wisdom that, that man teacheth, but what? But which the Holy Ghost teacheth. So guess what? Meaning what? I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost just like Christ taught me to. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. Because the church in Corinth, they, were, they got it twisted. Okay? Read the part again, verse 13. First book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 13. Verse 2, which chapter things? 2. Chapter 2, verse 13. First book of Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 13. Read. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, mm -hmm. but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You see that thing? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual, meaning you prove the spirit by the spirit. That's what he's saying right there. But the only way to do that, you cannot do that with the man's wisdom. You can't do it with man's wisdom. You can't prove or compare spiritual things with spiritual things. You can't compare spiritual things which with man's wisdom. That's what he's saying. Okay, you cannot use politics to discern what's going on in the world. You can't use Christianity to discern what's going on in the world. You can't use democracy to discern what's going on in the world. That's man's wisdom. God's wisdom teaches you that's how you discern spiritual things, meaning the spirit behind all of these institutions that are being set up to confuse the minds of the black man. You see that thing? 
You, or you can only do that with the laws of God because the laws of God will give you spiritual eyes. You're not going to judge by the side of your physical eyes, but by the side of your spiritual eyes. Give me that in John 7, 24. That's why Christ, Christ said this thing right here. John 7, verse 24. Come on. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 24. Read. Judge not according to the appearance. According to the what? Appearance. According to you, the appearance. Yes, don't judge according to the appearance. Meaning what? According to the side of your physical eyes. Don't make judgments like that. Come on. But judge righteous judgment. You see that thing? But judge righteous judgment. Meaning what? Descend the things spiritually and make righteous judgment. The only way you can make those righteous judgments, you have to do what? You have to put on your spiritual glasses. That's the only way you're going to be able to judge righteous judgment. Not by the side of your eyes. Give me Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Come on. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. So the branch that will grow out of the branch, the, the stem of Jesse, is talking about Christ. Go ahead. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The what? The spirit of of the Lord shall rest upon him. Give me John 3, give me Matthew 3, 16, go back there. Because Isaiah is prophesying of what's to come. He says, and the spirit of the Lord shall, shall, meaning future prophecy. Okay? Matthew 3, verse 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 16. Read. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Read. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. You see that thing? The Spirit of God lighted upon him, meaning it jumped on him. The Spirit of the, Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So Isaiah is prophesying of what John would do when he was going to what? Baptize Christ. Go back to Isaiah 11 verse 2. The book of Isaiah chapter 11 verses 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Come on. The spirit of wisdom and the what? understanding. The spirit of wisdom. Come on. And understanding. The spirit of wisdom and understanding will rest upon Christ. That's when the spirit descended, descended like a dove and lighted upon him. Go ahead. The spirit of counsel and might. Come on. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. You see that thing? Because he feared the Lord. Read on. Next verse. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Read. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. You see that thing? He is not going to judge after the sight of his eyes. He is not going to use his, his carnal mind, his carnal eyes, to judge matters. That's why it says, don't judge by the appearance, what you see with your physical eyes, but you must judge righteous judgment, what you see with your spiritual eyes. That's what he's saying. So it's raining, so it's a bit loud. Okay, so read verse 3 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Read. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Come on. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Meaning what? His carnal ears, he's going to use, he's going to discern things spiritually. Go back to 1 Corinthians, because that's what the Apostle Paul is saying. So the Apostle Paul, what is he saying? He is telling you, I'm moving in the spirit of Christ. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? What Isaiah just said is the same thing that the Apostle Paul is saying right here. Go back to 1 Corinthians 2, verse 13. Watch this. First book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. Come on. But 
which the Holy Ghost teaches. Come on. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You see that thing? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Next verse. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. This natural man is the one that the Apostle Paul was saying, you, uh, well, he says what? Not with wisdom of words. Because the natural man, they will teach you their own wisdom that they, dis, that, that they, they come up with with their own mind. Their own wicked mind will come with wicked imaginations. The Apostle Paul is saying, I'm not coming with that. Okay? I'm not coming with that thing. I'm coming with the spirit of the Most High God. He's saying, I'm going to come teaching. I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost, not with water. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? But the natural man, guess what they do? They think that's the way to go. That's why today, if you look at the Christian church, that's what they focus on. They focus on what? No, we must dip you in water. We must speak in tongues. You understand? That's what they do. The Bushiris, no one prophesying. Hey, last night, you know, there's a peanut butter in your fridge. Listen, that's man's wisdom. That's the natural man. They don't receive the things of the Spirit of God. They can't understand it. Okay? Read that part again, verse 14. First book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Come on. For they are foolishness unto him. They are what? Foolishness unto him. They are foolishness unto him. What? Must keep the law? I must grow my beard? I must observe the Sabbath? Wait, wait a minute. I must keep the Feast of Tabernacles? The Feast of Dedication? What? Nah, I'm not doing that. I want to speak in tongues, okay? I want to be dipped in water. That's the mind of, that's, the, that's when the, that's, that's a carnally minded individual. You understand? That's a carnally minded individual, right? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Come on. Neither can he know them. Read. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You see that thing? They are spiritually discerned. You have to discern them spiritually. That's why you cannot judge by the sight of what you see or what you hear with your physical eyes and ears. You must use the word of God to make proper judgments. Okay, watch this. Give me, go back to 1 Corinthians 1. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians 1, 17. One more again. First book of Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made none, should be made of none effect. You see that we see what the apostle Paul is saying right there. Watch this. Now, what we are going over now is the baptism of Christ. Okay, the true baptism. That's why Aquila and Priscilla, they had to what? They expounded unto Apollos a more, the, more, the, the more perfect way, which is what? The baptism of Christ, which is what? Through the Holy Ghost, not with water no more. I must decrease, he must increase. Okay, watch this. Give me, give, go back to John chapter 4. Go back to John 4. Okay, John chapter 4 verse 1. Now read John 4 verse 2. John 4 verse 2. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 2. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. Jesus himself baptized not, because how did Christ baptize? With the Holy Ghost. That's the same thing the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, 17. He says, Christ sent me not to baptize. The same way Christ didn't baptize with water, the Apostle Paul didn't baptize nobody in water. He preached the gospel because that was the what? That was the objective all along. Even when uh, John walk, was, was, was baptizing the people in water. The true baptism was still coming, which is what? Baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the law. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15.
the book of Mark, chapter 15, verses 15. No, Mark, Mark 16, Mark 16, verse 15. The book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 15. Come on. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You see what Christ is commanding the disciples to do? It says, Go ye in all the world. Go ye into all in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Because who is in all the world? The 12 tribes of Israel are scattered in all the world. You understand? The 12 tribes of Israel are scattered all over the world. Read on. He that believeth and is baptized and is what? Saved. And is baptized. It says, he that believeth and is baptized. He that believe, to believe means, to give me that in Sirach 32. Okay, Sirach 32, verse 24. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verses 24. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verses 24. Come on. He that believeth in the Lord, take it heed to the commandment. Stop right there. And he, he that believeth in the Lord will take heed, meaning they will apply the commandments of the Most High. Go back to where he was at. Mark 16, verse 16. The book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 16. Really? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Come on, don't pause. He that, Come on. The book of Mark chapter 16, verse 15, verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. You see that thing? But he that does not apply the laws of God, they are going to be damned, meaning condemnation. Okay. But he that believeth and is baptized, how are they going to be baptized? With the Holy Ghost. Because the disciples now understand how to baptize with the Holy Ghost. They must teach the people the law so the people may repent. No more water, dipping nobody in water. Okay? So that's the command that is, 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 um, is teaching the people to do. Another thing, you'll notice um, these uh, Christian church boys, they always say the same things. You understand? There was another one that came to the streets one time. He said, um, what was Jesus Christ's great commission? And I heard him. I just ignored him. Okay? The one that was saying, do you know who I am? That brother. Okay? When they say Jesus Christ's great commission, this is what they are talking about here. What did he commission their, their disciples to do? Read that again. Verse 16. Start at verse 15. The book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You see that thing? That's the, that's the great commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ahead. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So now what we're reading here is the instruction that the Lord gave to the disciples of what they need to do. You go to, this, to, to, the, to the whole earth where the children of Israel are scattered. Guess what? You're going to what? You're going to baptize them in the, with the Holy Ghost. You are going to baptize them with the word of God, the laws. And when they believe, they're going to repent and keep the commandments. That's what he's saying right there. Here's a famous one. Give me that in uh, Matthew 28, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. The book of Matthew chapter 28 verses 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need you to read the whole thing. Stop emphasizing nothing. Read the verse correctly. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Then do what? Teach all nations. 
and teach all nations. He says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go ahead. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So now this is the instruction that was given to the disciples by Christ. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Give me that in Acts 2 verse 5. He says, go ye therefore and teach all nations in all the world and teach the gospel to every creature. He's saying the same thing. Okay? Give me the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 verse 5. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 5. Read. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under, the, under heaven. Read that again. Read it right. Don't emphasize anything. Just read the scripture. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 5. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, mm -hmm. devout men, out of every nation under heaven. You see that thing? It says they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So when he says go, they go, uh, go out there and teach all nations, guess what? Who's scattered among all nations? The Jews. The Jews are scattered among all nations on earth and they are saving slavery. Okay, go back to Matthew 28, verse 19. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19. Come on. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You see that thing? So they must be baptized. So the children of Israel, wherever they are scattered, we must be baptized with in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, not the Trinity, okay? This is not talking about that. I went over a class about that thing, okay? But the, the baptism is talking about being baptized with the Holy Ghost. That is what we are doing right now because the acts of the apostles, they never end, they never stopped. The acts of the apostles, they never stopped. You read the book or you can read the whole book of Acts when you finish the book, you're not going to find Amen. You're not going to find it in there. Because the acts, of, the acts of the apostles continue. That's what's going on now. The acts of the apostles. That is what we're doing this day. Understand that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of First Peter, chapter 3, verse 21. Okay? Because, like I was mentioning at the beginning of the class, Israel, we was doing the, the, the using the water to wash and all of that. It was done during the time of... Uh, the time of, um, of, of when we was in the wilderness, we was doing that. During the time of the prophets in Babylon, we was doing that thing. Okay? Even up to the time when Christ walked the earth, we were still doing it. Okay? Watch this. But what the Apostle Peter is going to reveal unto us is really what water actually does. First Peter 3.21. Read that. First book of Peter 3 verse 21. Come on. The like figure we unto even baptism doth also now save us. You see that thing? Even baptism doth also now save us. Watch this. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. You see that thing? It says baptism, yes, is going to save you, but not the type of baptism that John was doing, not the water. Okay? It says not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, because the water that they dip you in, all it does is to put away the filth of the flesh. But guess what he doesn't do? Next, next part of the verse. Come on. But the answer of a good conscience toward God. You see that thing? This is what's going to save you. This is the true baptism that's going to save you. Meaning being baptized with the laws of God. But the answer of a good conscience towards God. Where's your conscience? Your mind. That's the true baptism. The one that the baptism does not, that's going to save you is having a good conscience towards God. How do you have a good conscience towards the Most High God? You keep his commandments. You apply his laws to your life. Okay, come on. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the part I want to deal with. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, watch this. Give me the book of Romans. Okay, we coming back here. Um, hmm. you know what, before we deal with that, before we deal with that, give me the book of Isaiah, okay, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16, we're still dealing with the water, because the apostle Peter revealed unto us that the water 
all that it does is is put away the filth of the flesh. It, it you just wash yourself with that's why Jeremiah said what he said. You know what? Hold this. Go to Jeremiah two twenty two. Then we're gonna go to Isaiah one verse sixteen. Jeremiah two verse twenty two. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verses 22. Come on. For though thou wash thee with, with nitri, nitri. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 22. For Come though on. thou wash thee with nitri, uh -huh. and take thee much soap. Come on. Yet thine iniquity is marked before me, said the Lord God. So the Lord is saying, yes, although you wash yourself with soap and these cleansing solutions, your iniquity still remains because guess what? You don't have a good conscience towards the Lord. You are not keeping the commandments. Your sins, your sins still remain. This is what the Lord wanted from us. Isaiah 116. Read that. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 16. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil. Okay, I need you to read the verse. Come on, read, just read the scripture. Okay, Sir. your job is to your job is to read, just read the scripture. Okay, stay focused. Verse 16 again, because you are really messing me up. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 16. Wash you. Make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil. So now the Lord is commanding us, says, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings be from before mine eyes, cease to do, meaning stop sinning. That's what he's saying. So the washing part here, when he says, wash you, make you clean, he's talking about what? This is what he's talking about. Give me Ephesians chapter five, verse 26. Okay, this is what he's talking about. When he says, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil, meaning stop sinning, stop breaking my commandments. That's what he's saying right there. Ephesians chapter 5 now, verse 26. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 26. Come on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see that thing? The true cleansing, the true sanctification is the washing of water by the word. That's the baptism with the Holy Ghost. That's the true baptism. You understand the baptism of Christ. So read that again, verse 26. The book of Ephesians chapter, the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see that thing? Sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That's why the Lord, go back to Isaiah 116. Read that thing again. The book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16. Come on. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil. So now this washing and making our, ourselves clean, we must do what? We must keep the laws of God. We wash with the word. That's what Isaiah was saying. That's what the Lord was saying through Isaiah. Wash when you say wash, keep the commandments, cleanse your spirit up, have a good conscience towards God, meaning your conscience, your mind must be cleaned up because water it just make you wet, it doesn't change anything. You understand? You are a homosexual, you dip your you be dipped in water, you come out as a wet homosexual. That's what it is, it doesn't change nothing. Okay, watch this John 15, verse 3 now. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You see what? This is Christ now. So Christ is teaching us the true baptism, the true cleansing. Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The, the word that I have taught you. You see that thing? The word that I have taught you. Ye are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you, that I have taught unto you. That's what Christ is saying right there. Read that again. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. 
Give me Psalms 119 verse 9. Psalms 119 verse 9. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verses 9. Read. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Come on. By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. He says, what with all shall a young man cleanse his way? How shall you cleanse your way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Meaning keep the commandments. Take heed to the commandments. Apply the laws of God to your life. That's how you become, you get a good conscience towards God. Now let's go to 1 Peter now. 3 verse 21. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21. Let's read that thing again. First book of Peter's, chapter 3, verses 21. Come on. The like figure we unto even baptism doth also now save us, not putting, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but okay. The... Okay, could you put some energy in this thing? Because now you are just reading like a noodle. Okay, read verse yes, 21 sir. again. Come on. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 21. There we go. The like, the like figure we unto even baptism doth also now save us. Read. Really? Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, Come but on. the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Christ, Jesus Christ. So now what we're reading here is the apostle Peter is, is explaining to us that water doesn't do anything for you. You understand? Water doesn't do anything for you except washing the filth from your flesh, from your body, your physical body. But the true baptism is what? An answer of a good conscience towards God. What is that conscience towards God? The Holy Ghost, the law, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Watch this. Give me Romans chapter 6, verse 3. He says, by the, uh, uh, an answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Watch this. So Christ's resurrection was symbolic of something. Watch this. Romans 6 verse 3. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 6 verses 3. Read. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Okay, this is how you read it. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? That's how you read this thing. Come on, read verse 3 again. The book of Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Know ye not read. that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? So, so when we, we, we were baptized into Jesus Christ, we were baptized into his death. Meaning what? We were baptized into his death. What does that mean? Jump down to verse 5 now. Watch this. This is what it means. We're baptized into his death. Okay, come on. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 5. For if we have, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. In the we, what? In the likeness of his death. He says, if we have been planted together with Christ in the likeness of his death. Okay, come on. Meaning what? When he was crucified, when he sacrificed himself. Read. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. We shall be also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So jump back up to verse 3. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? So how we was baptized into Christ's death is us repenting of our sins. That's how we were baptized into his death. Because Christ dying was also what? Symbolic of us that we also need to what? Our, the old man must be put to death so that the new man must be born again. The same way he resurrected, we also must resurrect from the dead. That is the symbolism behind it. Jump back down to verse 5. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 5. Come for on. If we, for if we 
have been planted together in the likeness of his death, mm -hmm. we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. In the likeness of his resurrection, meaning what? To be born again. Go ahead. Knowing this, that our, that our old man is crucified with him. Our what? That, the, that our old man is crucified with him. He says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Our old man. Come on, brothers. You brothers, you're soldiers. The hell is this? Read that again, verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. You see that thing? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. So when it says we are baptized into his death, it means what? The old man must be put to death. You understand? The old man with his deeds must be put to death. Go ahead. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That the what? The body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin must be destroyed because we was in the midst of sin. So the body of sin must be put to death. Go ahead. That henceforth we should not serve sin. We should not serve sin. Because before Christ, that's what we was doing. We was a servant who was servants to sin. We were saving our sins. And the things that we would do to make it seem like we're repenting was the washing of the water, not by the word, just the washing of the water physically. But the mind wasn't being changed. The mind wasn't being baptized. The mind was not cleansed from the, the filthiness that it that is in. So when Christ came, he had to do what? He has to, he had to teach us as pertaining to the conscience. It was no longer monotonous. It wasn't like a robot. No. You had to now sit down and think and examine yourself. Get your mind right. That's why Christ did the way that he did. So this is the true baptism. That the old man must be put to death. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Watch this. Give me Colossians chapter 3 verse 9. Colossians chapter 3. And verse 9. Watch this. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 9. Come on. For in him dwelleth no, no. all the full. No, no. Colossians 3. Colossians 3, verse 9. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Lie not one to another. Come on. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. You see that thing? It says, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. The same thing is writing to the church of Colossae. Is the same thing as writing to the children of Israel in Rome. That's why he's saying that our old man is crucified with him. That's why in verse 3, Romans 6 verse 3 says, uh, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. That's why it says verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That's how we were baptized with him in, we were baptized into his death. When the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That's the same thing he's saying in Colossians 3 verse 9. Read that again, verse 9. The book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 9. Read. Lie not one to another, seeing that you put off the old man with his deeds. You must put off the old man with his deeds. The old man. The old man must be crucified. Go ahead. And have, and have put on the new man, which is have renewed. What? And have put on the new man. And have put on the new man. The new man. That's why it says what? An answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's how you put on the new man. Just like Christ resurrected, we also must resurrect and put the old man to death with his sins. Read that part again, verse 10. The book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. And have put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge and after the image of him that created him. You see that thing? So we must put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Meaning what? The image of Christ. Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. We must be renewed, okay? We must be renewed, having a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 4, verse 23. Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. And Come on. be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Read that again. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You must be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's how we are what? 
That's why it says we must put off, we must put off the old man with his deeds. You understand? That the body of sin might be might be destroyed. Because guess what? We are what? Renewed in the spirit of our minds. We must be renewed in the spirit. That's the true baptism of Christ. Being baptized with the Holy Ghost. Keep the laws of God so that you can have a good conscience towards God as pertaining to the conscience. You understand? Read that again, verse 23. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. You know what? You know what? Mm. Start at verse 22. Read verse 22. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. Come on. That he put off concerning the former conversation of the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. That he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. The what? Which, the old man. The old man that must be dis that the old man that must be destroyed with his deeds, with his sins. The old man we must put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Go ahead. Which is corrupt according to the which, deceitful which, lust. Hold on. Which wait, wait, which is what? Which is corrupt. So this old man that must be put off is corrupt. You understand? Corrupted. So this man must be put to death. Go ahead. According to the deceitful lusts. Because we was deceived in the world. Okay, saving diverse lusts and pleasures. Go ahead. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Because your mind is a spirit that must be renewed with the laws of God. That's why it says you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Come on. And that you put on the new man. You see that part right there? And that you put on the new man. An answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, come on. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see that thing? Meaning what? You are after God now in righteousness and true holiness. Go back to Romans chapter 6 now. Verse 6 again. The book of Romans chapter 6, verses 6. Read. Knowing, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, mm -hmm. that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So now what the Apostle Paul is explaining here, he's also going to explain what, the true baptism, that the old man must be put to death. How does, how does that happen? We repent and keep the commandments of the Most High God. That's how the old man is going to be what crucified, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that we should henceforth should not serve sin. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Watch this. 1 book of Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. How that our first book of Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Which sea is this? The Red Sea. It's talk about the Red Sea. It says how that all our fathers were under the cloud, meaning the chariot, and all passed through the sea, the Red Sea. Go ahead. And were all baptized unto Moses. In the cloud and in the sea. Read the read, read verse two again, okay? Because we need to understand what the apostle Paul is saying here, okay? Read verse two again. First book Corinthians chapter ten verse two, mm -hmm. and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. He says, and our fathers, you see, our fathers that were under the cloud and that passed through the Red Sea, he says, were all baptized unto Moses. You're not going to read anywhere in the Bible where Moses was dipping people in water. You're not going to read that. But here the Apostle Paul is saying, Moses, the, our forefathers were baptized unto Moses. How were they baptized unto Moses? Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 now, verse 44. Christ too, Christ's true baptism has always been from the beginning. Okay? Watch this. 
Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 44. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verses 44. Come on. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 44. Come and on. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. The law, the law, the law. That's how our forefathers were baptized unto Moses. Because Moses taught the law. He taught them the commandments. Read that again, verse 44. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 44. Come on. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. That's how they were baptized unto Moses. Because Moses taught the people the law. Go ahead. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Moses spake unto the children of Israel after they came forth out of Egypt. You see that thing? So when Moses taught us the testimonies, the statutes, the judgments for breaking the laws, guess what? That's how we was baptized unto Moses. Moses baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's some heavy stuff right there. Moses baptized with the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 24. Okay. Exodus chapter 24. We're going to start at verse 3. Exodus 24 and verse 3. Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 24 verse 3. Come on. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord had said, we will do. You see what he's saying right there? And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and the judgments. You see that the same thing we read in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 45. Okay, the words and the judgments for breaking these laws or these words of the Lord. Verse 3 again. The book of Exodus chapter 24, verse 3. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord had said, we will do. He says, all the words which the Lord has said, we will do. So we are saying, Amen. We agree. We are not going to break these laws. Go, and we broke every single one of them. Go ahead. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. You see they that said, thing? He took the book of the covenant. The book of the covenant is the Bible. He took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people when everybody could see. That's what we do when we're at camp. That's the audience of the people. The people that are be sitting down on the benches and all of that in their cars, that's the audience of the people. Don't get into it. This is all spiritual. Because a lot of the time, brothers, they expect people to be right in front of us asking, mm -mm. the people that are sitting over there, some will be pretending that they are not listening. Those are the audience of the people. You understand? And they are hearing the words of the Most High God. They will answer for that if they don't repent. Understand? That's the audience of the people. Because that effeminate brother that came to camp, he said, no, nobody's listening to you. He's dumb as hell. Okay? Because he thought he was something special. Okay? Because he thought, no, nobody's listening to us. I'm like, look around you. You see how many people are standing here? The people, that's the audience of the people. Read that part again, verse 7. The book of Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. Read. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord had said, we will do and be obedient. You see that thing? All that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. And that was a big fat lie. Because where we at now? In slavery. You understand? So these words that the Lord wrote through Moses, they spoke, they are witnessing unto us. And guess what? The same words that witness unto us that allow us to end up in slavery is the same words that is waking us up 
through the curses and the judgments and the stresses and the oppression. The Most High is a genius. Okay, watch this. Give me, go back to First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 2 again. One, read that thing. First book of Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. There we go, right there. Just like, just read exactly like that. I hope you brothers that are going to be reading, you pay attention. Go ahead. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. You see that thing? And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Okay? So Moses baptized the people. How did he do it? He taught them the law. That is the same thing that we are doing this day. We are baptizing the people with the word of God. That's the true baptism. Not dipping nobody in water. Okay? Nobody jumping in the pool. Mm -mm. Keep the commandments of the most High God. That's how the baptism, that's, that's, why, that's why John said, he must, I must decrease, he must increase. Because the one that cometh after me, if they shoes, I'm not worthy to fill these shoes. Okay? So, I'm going to end the class right here. All right? I'm going to keep it simple. Let's break bread. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as, oft, for as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.